Why, hello there. Welcome back to the animal room, where today I'm finally going to be setting up an enclosure for my new Lichianus gecko. Similar to crested geckos, lychee geckos come from the islands of New Caledonia and have very similar care requirements. Except they get a little bit bigger. Regardless, enclosure setup will be basically the same as a crested gecko. Now, I got this little one a couple of months ago when she was just a few weeks old. She has since grown a little bit and I'm 99% sure that she is a female. A name that I'm really liking right now is Luna, but if you guys have any suggestions, make sure to leave those down in the comments. So without further ado, uh, let's get started. Hey there. Okay, so the first thing we need to do to get this started is uh, take a look at the enclosure. So, uh, look down here. So this might come as a bit of a surprise to some of you, but I am actually not making my own this time. The enclosure I'm using is a 12 by 12 by 15 Zilla front opening terrarium. So here's the enclosure all opened up. Got all the plastic crap off of it. This should be a pretty good canvas. It's got some really cool features that I like, um, such as, you know, the top, it's got this little plastic insert so you can help, you know, retain a little bit more humidity if needed. And then also the entire like mesh piece has like a hinge on it. So you can kind of open that up just to make it easier for, you know, feeding or whatever. Also the entire top comes off too. So that'll make it easier for, you know, installing backgrounds or any sort of that good stuff. Now, speaking of backgrounds, this one comes with a realistic rock foam background that I will not be using because, well, come look at it. So here's this so-called realistic rock foam background, and at first glance it might not look that bad, but upon closer inspection you can see it's got all these little like weird, I don't even know what they are, they almost look like screws, but they're like soft. And then just the color on it is really weird and unnatural, and I don't like it. So that means that we're going to do away with this piece of trash and I'm going to make my own. So you guys should know the drill by now, and this means it's time to go to the garage. Okay, we're here in the garage. So like usual to make this background, I'll be using some of this XPS foam. Now in order to make a really cool background, like usual, I start by getting out the enclosure and then taking some measurements of the back side of it. Then I transfer those measurements onto a sheet of XPS foam, carve it to size, and snap it along the table. So now that we have the background cut, normally the next step would be to draw on the pattern and then add layers of foam and then carve it. But I would like to do things a little bit differently this time. I want to try almost mixing the scape with the background using like spray foam and then obviously hardscape materials. So before we move on with the background, I'm going to take the tank and the background back downstairs and I'm going to lay it on its back and then I'm just going to mess around with a few little pieces of wood and some cork rounds that I have. So let's go back downstairs. Okay, so I think this is the scape that I want to go with. I really like the cork, how it's kind of, you know, the main detail, and then we've got some like vining things around it. One thing about lychee geckos is they love cork bark, not only hiding inside of it, but their camouflage on top of it. It's just, it's so natural for them, and I really wanted to make that the focus of this scape. But I think the next thing I'm going to do now that I'm happy with the scape that I have is I'm going to take it back upstairs to the garage and then I'm going to hot glue everything to the background and then uh, I guess we'll just go from there. So uh, back to the garage. Okay, we're back in the garage again. So now that I have the tank out here, I'm going to reassemble the entire scape and then I'm just gonna go and hot glue that down and then from there, uh, I guess we'll see. So um, let's glue. So whilst we wait on this hot glue to cure now that it's all in place, I think it's time I explain to you guys what I'm doing. Now, when you think of naturalistic backgrounds for vivariums, two specific ones come to mind. One is the XPS foam backgrounds that I normally do with the dry lock on top, and two is the spray foam covered in cocoa fiber. Now, personally, 
I hate the cocoa fiber one with a passion because I've never been able to get it to work for me. I've never had it look good for me. I've seen other people do it, but I can't. Oh, the plan for this background is I hot glued everything in place. I'm going to take the background out of the tank and then I'm going to spray foam everything in. I'm gonna, you know, cover all the gaps and cracks, kind of make the naturalistic shape over the back of it. And then instead of covering it with cocoa fiber, I'm going to go over it with possibly a wire brush drill bit, I don't know. But I'm gonna carve it and then I'm going to go over it with the dry lock. That way it'll hold up long term and hopefully I can get a better look. So uh, I just gotta wait for this hot glue to dry and then we're just gonna uh, just put some little bit of uh, foam in there and then uh, hopefully it doesn't suck, so. Uh... Yo. Okay, so our foam has now been applied. I think it'll turn out pretty well. Only time will tell. But one thing I wanna do is there are a few little entry points as you can see to this cork, but I wanna just maybe drill a couple just to give her a little bit more space. And then when she grows, just so she has more room to kinda get in there and go and hide and do her stuff and whatnot. So I'm just gonna get a few drill bits, drill those real quick, and then we'll uh, wait for the foam to dry and move on to the next step. Hello there. Okay, it is now the next day and our holes have been drilled and the foam is now dry. So come look at this. So here it is. It's all nice and big and hard and squishy and whatnot. So the next thing I'm gonna do, I did a little bit of a test yesterday right here, as you can see, to do the wire brush drill bit. I think it'll work nicely. So what I'm gonna do first though, is I'm gonna go back with my laser blade. I'm going to cut all the foam, just kind of, you know, soften it up a bit. And then we can go back with the wire brush drill bit. So uh, let's do that. Okay, so the wire brush drill bit didn't add too much in terms of texture, which is completely fine because I was more using it for shape just to get smoother and more unnatural shapes compared to the razor blade. Overall, I think it's turning out pretty good so far. Um, the foam is pretty soft, so like I do with the XPS foam, I'm going to go over it with the heat gun just to seal it up a little bit, and then I'm also gonna go over it with a little bit of sand papier just to get it all uh, good and good and good. Good. So now that we're at this point with the background, it's time to paint it. Using some white tintable dry lock as well as concrete pigments, I start by pouring some dry lock into a small container and then mixing up some of the charcoal concrete pigments. I then stir it up and apply it to the background in a thick coat. I then repeat this process using progressively lighter coats that I brush over the surface. This helps add color and depth. Okay, so the painting is done, and I think that our little background's looking pretty good. It's kind of hard to see because my arms aren't very long, but I think it looks super good. So uh, now that the background's done, it's time to go back downstairs again and uh, continue working on this thing. <sighs> okay, so now that we're downstairs for the 475th time, so now that we're at that point, the next thing we need to do is to work on the false bottom. So let's make a false bottom. And in order to make a false bottom, I'll start by using some Leica and window screen mesh. I start by pouring the Leica into the enclosure in a little thick layer that I then pat down to evenly distribute it. Then I take my piece of window screen mesh, set my tank on top of it, and cut around it. After that, I insert the mesh into the tank and make sure to curl it up towards the sides to help keep the substrate in place. It's time to mix the substrate. So the substrate mix that I'm going to be using for this enclosure is three part cocoa fiber, two part reptile bark, one part sand, and one part charcoal. After that, I give everything a good mix and then start adding it into the enclosure. Whilst adding it into the enclosure, I make sure to give it a slope towards the back to help create depth. Okay, so now that the substrate's in place, it's time to prep the plants. And the way I prep my plants is I start by removing the actual plants from the pots and then breaking up all of the soil around the roots trying my best to get everything off then I take them over to the sink or outside with the hose 
and try and wash off any of that remaining soil. After that, just to remove any pesticides or whatever, I soak them in water for about 15 minutes. And I should mention that this water is warm and I also do use dechlorinated water. So now that the plants are all prepped, uh, it's time to plant it and do the final details. So let us do that. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the project. I had a blast making this. I absolutely love the way it turned out. It's kind of hard to explain if you haven't set up enclosures for animals before, but this just feels like a lychee gecko enclosure. As of recording this now, it's been a few days since she's been in here and I've seen her exploring, even blending in with the cork bark. I'll put some pictures up on camera just to show you guys that, but it's just, it, it really feels like it's her enclosure, which is what I want to do. I always love to design my enclosures for my animals to be exactly everything that it needs for them and more. She seems like she feels right at home. It's better than that stupid tub she was living in. I love the way this turned out. I think she does as well. I wanna know what you guys think. Let me know down in the comments. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button and leave a like. And I'll see you guys next time.